Hi, I'm here to demonstrate how to build a polygon of a mermaid tail in Autodesk's Maya 2008. Bear in mind that I am not familiar with the keyboard shortcuts and many of the tools that are included in Maya 2008. So as you watch me do this, there may be things or suggestions or different ways that you might do the same things. I'm just going to show you what I know and what I have found in the brief few hours I've uh, done with experimenting with Maya. The first thing to do to build a mermaid tail is to go to your polygon tools and select a cone. I also have snap to grids option turned on and that's just to help uh, kind of get things uh, centered and aligned and drag down to create my cone and there you are. I'm gonna right click on the cone and go over to my cone panel. I believe it is polycone option that I want and the subdivisions height is the number of rings that are included in the cone. And five uh, gives me a pretty good number um, you can change this to whatever number you like, whatever's you know neat going to be needed for your um, vertex weights and boning. And the subdivision axis, I it's good to keep it around 20 so that you have a good number of vertical lines surrounding this this uh, model. And you're gonna need that so that your fins can be relatively thin. And what I'm going to do is go to your side panel, zoom in here a bit, and right click and I'm going to choose the face mode and get close enough so that I can select the two center faces. And if you look up in the perspective mode you can see that I have the faces cho uh, selected on both sides. Let me zoom in because I don't know how sharp this recording is going to come in but there you can probably see that the faces on both sides of the cone are selected. And these are going to be extruded to become our fins. Now before you start extruding go up to your edit mesh and make sure you have keep faces together selected. Now this is going to keep them uh, joined together so that they don't extrude as separate faces uh, pulling straight away from the center of the cone. I'm going to go up to extrude now and I'm going to pull out a little bit on the cone. And in the top view you can see that the two faces on either side of the cone are together. Next I'm going to go to the scale tool and I'm going to scale them together so that uh, they form basically a straight line. Next I'm going to hit the G key and that will just simply repeat the last command that I used so that I extrude again and again we will scale it in. Hit the G key again your scale tool and scale again. And one final time with the G key, pull it out, go to your scale tool, and you can scale these together as close as you can because these vertices, uh, vertices on the end are going to end up being welded together eventually. <clears throat> and right now I'm going to choose to go to vertex mode. You can use face mode or any other mode you like. <clears throat> But I'll show you why vertex mode is um, probably your best option in a minute. I'm going to select all the vertexes on just the one side. <clears throat> and then we are going to go up to the rotate tool. And I'm going to double click on it so that I have my rotate tool panel open here. <clears throat> what I want you to do is turn on the reflection settings. When you turn that on, you'll notice that the other side of the model, the vertices turn white. 
any white ones are going to be reflected model um, vertices. And the movement and rotation of those vertices are going to rotate around the axis you choose. I have it chosen to rotate around the x-axis, which is what I want. <clears throat> when I rotate, the opposite side rotates accordingly. And the same option goes for move. If you look at the move settings, you have your, <clears throat> your settings um, so that if I move them in or out, both sides move in and out equally as much. And then once I have the first set here aligned properly, I can go in here, I can do a little moving if I want, and I'm going to turn off my snap to grid option because that's throwing me the heck off. And all I'm going to do here is simply just go about, you know, doing my uh, simple move scale and rotate you know options and you can you know certainly scale and do whatever you want here with these and let's just for the sake of brevity hurry up and go to the bottom one and rotate that little bit and looks like I gotta move these in a little and maybe up a little <clears throat> move them in a little bit more maybe now I'm gonna grab the bottom uh, vertices here and the reason I had chosen to do this in vertex mode earlier was so that when I go up to uh, edit mesh here next I'm gonna merge them to the center and that merges just the one side. You'll notice that the reflection tool does not work with the edit mesh and merge to center option. And there we go. And pretty simply, you know, that's the long and short of it. Um, right there, I can zoom out here into perspective mode and do a little rotating around. You can see how that came out. And again, as I did in the other uh, um, video, you can shape the tail a little better to form more bends or curves or however you like, or however you uh, intend to apply the bones to that, that mesh. Uh, of course, the other option is to simply do the follow the tutorial that I showed you in 3ds Max. However, then you have to export as an FBX file and then import it into here, and you're using two applications which could all be done in just one. So to me, I think it would be best to simply choose your um, program of choice and learn how to use that properly and do everything in the one application so that you're not switching back and forth between the two um, simply because you are unsure on how to um, how to do things in the one. It's best just to stick with one, make a decision, and stick with it. So if you have any other questions, comments, give me an email at hxamaranth at hotmail.com, and thanks for watching.